today I'm going to be showing you some really cool, unique techniques to help you to create some beautiful pieces of home decor. We're also going to be doing a giveaway, so stay tuned to find out how you can win. To kick things off, we're going to start by transforming a plastic Walmart tray with a household item that I'm sure that most, if not all of you have at home. Are you curious to find out what it is? Well, let's get started. The first thing that I did was I selected a variety of spray paint colors. I chose a yellow gold, a bright coat gold, a rose gold, and a silver spray paint. Now you can customize your spray paints to fit into whatever color scheme you have, or you can theme them to a party. Now I took my plastic Walmart tray outside and began to spray the tray with the paint. I sprayed in alternating colors in a striped pattern. For my stripes, I'm using the yellow gold, the silver, and then the bright coat gold. I alternated in stripes until my tray was completely covered. So do you have a guess of what household item you already have that we're gonna be using for this tray? It is dish soap. Yes, dish soap, just regular dish soap. It doesn't matter the color, it doesn't matter the brand, it doesn't matter if it has a scent, you just need dish soap. So I took my dish soap and I drizzled it over the top of the tray. You could do whatever design you wanted. I'm doing zigzags, you could do stripes, you could do dots, you could make your lines thinner or thicker, it's up to you. Once the dish soap was on my tray, I got my rose gold spray paint and I began to spray over everything, the soap and the tray. Once the tray was completely covered, I let it sit for about five minutes just so the paint could set up a bit. And then I got my hose. I sprayed the soap off the tray. Where the soap was, the rose gold paint wasn't able to stick to the tray. So as we wash away the soap, it unveils the striped paint that we put on the tray originally. Mind blown, right? So I shook the water off of the tray and then I let it air dry. You don't wanna wipe anything off because it might wipe the paint off. So what you can do is wait for maybe 10 minutes and then blot it gently with a paper towel to get any excess water off of the tray. How cool is this technique? I wish I could take credit for it and say that my mind came up with this genius idea, but it didn't. I saw it a few times on TikTok and I really wanted to try it out and I am amazed at the results. It was so affordable, it was so easy, and you can customize this to whatever color scheme you want. You guys, I challenge you to try this project. It was so easy and I think that you will be delighted with the results. To style my tray, I am using pieces that I have created in previous videos. The first thing I'm gonna put on my tray is a frosted glass candle holder with a gold stripe on the bottom. Next to that, I'm adding a white and yellow look for less flower arrangement, and finally, a rose gold candle. It's time to find out more about that giveaway. I am participating in the July Fab Five collaboration with some very talented YouTube ladies, and we decided that we wanted to do a giveaway. So we are going to give two $50 Amazon gift cards to some very lucky viewers. So all you need to do to be entered, watch the videos, leave a comment. So I hope you all enter, good luck. A lot of glass vases just hanging around my house so every opportunity I have I try to spruce them up a bit. I have this glass vase that has a green tint to it and yeah I just don't use it so it's time for a makeover. I have a package of plastic gems that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. Now my little daughter decided that she wanted to play with them so she took them and used them and played with them in her little treasure box and when she was finished, she decided to give them back to me, which was very nice. So she said, here, mom, you can have the sassifiers back. 
So today we are using some plastic sassifiers to embellish our vase. I'm going to get some hot glue and I'm going to put it around the lip of the vase. I place the gems in the hot glue. I think that the different angles give more dimension and I didn't want everything to be uniform. I like the gems to be facing several different directions. I put two rows around the rim at first, but then I looked at it and I thought, you know what, this could really use another one. So I did a third row. Once all of the gems were set, I took the vase outside and I sprayed it in some gold coat Rust-Oleum spray paint. I sprayed around the entire vase. I made sure the gems were coated really well. That way the vase was all one color and no blue gems were showing through at all. I let this first coat dry for 20 minutes and then I flipped the vase over and I sprayed the vase again, made sure that all of those gems were covered from all the angles and then I let it dry completely, which took 30 minutes. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but vases like these are really on trend right now. So to be able to stay on trend and stay in budget is something that this vase does because it is perfect for an accent piece, but it is very affordable because all we did was use a vase that I already had, gems from the dollar store, and some spray paint. I am displaying this on a tray that it was also from Walmart. I spray painted white and Mod Podge some beautiful wrapping paper to the bottom. I added a tall gold plant stand. This was a thrift store makeover that I did. And I'm also adding some beautiful flowers. I'm coordinating those flowers into our newly updated vase. And then I'm adding a candle to the bottom of the tray. Next, we're going to be creating a beautiful piece of bird art. I'm going to start off with a canvas. I purchased this canvas at Ross, but you can also get them at the Dollar Tree very affordably. The canvas is going to act as a backdrop for the art that we're putting on top. So I'm going to be showing you another really cool paint technique. I started out with a piece of butcher paper, and then I got a large piece of wax paper and placed it on top of the paper. I selected two colors of craft paint. I chose a metallic gold and a white craft paint. I took the gold craft paint and I zigzagged it across the surface of the wax paper. Then I took my white craft paint and I zigzagged that over the wax paper and in between the gold paint. Next, I took my blank canvas and I flipped it over and placed the front down into the paint. I pressed it firmly and gave it a little bit of a wiggle just to make sure that the front canvas was coated in the paint. Then I picked it up. Now, I know it's not very pretty right now, but don't worry, we are going to make it look a hundred times better. I got a sponge brush and I smoothed out the paint onto the canvas. I love the variations in color between the white and the gold. It's very subtle and provides an abstract design. I also painted each of the four sides of the canvas and then let it dry completely, which took two hours. While this paint is drying, I'm going to move on to the design that I'm going to be placing on the top. I found a beautiful bird design online. I did not create it. I found it on another website, but it is a free printable. So I will leave a link in my description box. If you like it, you can go to that website and print it off. I also have three wooden slats, so I'm going to turn this picture into a triptych. I need to cut my picture into three separate pieces. So I got my Cricut self-healing mat and a Cricut rotary cutter. I placed my picture on the mat. I measured out the size that I needed to fit onto my wooden panels. I got a ruler and a pencil and I marked out the shape. Then I got my rotary cutter and cut along the lines to create my three separate rectangular pieces. I'm going to be Mod Podging these three rectangular pieces onto three separate wooden panels. So I got my Mod Podge and a sponge brush 
and I added a liberal amount to the surface of the wood. Then I placed my first rectangular picture piece on top of the panel. Then I got a ruler and I pressed the paper firmly to the wood. Doing this removes any air bubbles and helps the paper to lie flat. I continued with the second and third panel and I did the exact same thing, adding the Mod Podge to the wood and then placing the paper over the top and then finally pressing it firmly together with the ruler. So you might be wondering what I'm going to be doing about the excess paper that's coming over the edge of the wooden slats. Well, I'm going to be using a technique with a piece of sandpaper. I'm going to take the sandpaper and I'm gonna put it along the edge and I'm going to pull it directly down. And as I do that, this motion cleanly removes the paper from the edge. The important thing to remember is to make sure that you're going directly down instead of side to side. I remove the excess paper from each of the edges to get a crisp, sharp line on the end of each panel. After I was finished removing the excess paper, I began to Mod Podge the top of each panel. I fully coated the entire surface of the paper in the Mod Podge and then I let it dry for two hours. I'm adding some hot glue to the back of each one of the panels and then I'm placing them on my canvas equidistant from each other and also centered in the middle of the canvas. Now each of us were given a challenge item for this collaboration. I was challenged from Rebecca Virginia DIY to use a button somewhere in my project. So I'm going to add some buttons that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. I am using these small cream colored buttons and I'm going to add them as an embellishment on the top of my canvas. I got some hot glue and I added the hot glue to the back of the buttons and then I placed them sporadically throughout the bird art. I wanted to put a frame around my canvas, so I got a Dollar Tree frame. I removed the glass and the backing, so I just had the frame part. I placed that over the top of the canvas, and then I pressed in those little metal pieces on the side to make sure that the canvas stayed in place, and then I placed my artwork on a gold easel. To display this piece, I'm going to be placing it next to a thrifted bird cage that I gave a makeover to. It has some shiny birds hanging inside that I cut out with my Cricut. And also I created a tassel garland that I made out of some seed pods. And then I added a small gold cloche with a bird decal on the front. Well, these were so much fun to make today. I really enjoyed testing out some new techniques and some new ideas. I hope you enjoyed testing them out with me too. And I hope that you were inspired and want to create some of these pieces on your own. Now make sure that you watch the videos, leave a comment and continue to do that. That way you will be entered to win one of two $50 Amazon gift cards. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I post weekly videos on all things home decor and I would love to have you subscribe to my channel. I hope that you enjoyed decorating with me today and I hope you got some inspiration. I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much for watching.